Our guest right now is uh, Gary Byrne, the uh, Secret Service agent who has uh, written the book about Hillary Clinton called Crisis of Character. Uh, Mr. Byrne, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Hey, how are you today? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. I appreciate you being with us. Uh, clearly, your book is uh, getting a lot of attention right now, although uh, not from the mainstream media, it doesn't appear. No, no. Um, <laughs> apparently, the, uh, the Clinton mentality, the Clinton machine has uh, struck out against me um, and basically squashing my First Amendment rights by pressuring the normal uh, mainstream media not to uh, give me a voice. They don't have any problem with having people on there trashing me and defaming me, but uh, they won't give me the 10 minutes that I need to, to uh, set the record straight. My suspicion is, based on the highlights I've read from your book, and I haven't been able to read all of it yet, is that you're not surprised by that at all after your experience mm. with the Clintons. No, I'm not. You know, I, I kind of consider myself an unofficial expert on the Clintons and the Clinton machine. Um, having worked for them for eight years, um, protecting them when I was in the Secret Service Uniform Division. And then, uh, you know, I, of course, I, I stayed uh, active with uh, all the news in the press for, you know, the last 25, 30 years. I'm a little bit of a news junkie, so uh, I'm up to speed on uh, what, to expect, what to expect. Well, I, I definitely want to uh, pick your brain over this most recent sure. dust-up with Hillary Clinton. Uh, but before I get to that, you had an opportunity to work in and around the Clintons for for many years. I'm I'm watching uh, today as the House Judiciary Committee questions the FBI director on Hillary Clinton's honesty and whether or not she lied to Congress when she claimed she didn't send a classified emails. Um, I w- I'm guessing that th- this is a pattern you saw repeated a number of times when you were working with them in the White House. Absolutely. Absolutely. It, it's Clinton, the Clinton uh, modus operandi, uh, A+. Plus. It's exactly what I would expect to see. Um, for instance, back when she started running about a year ago, she told some fictitious story when she landed in Bosnia and she was, had to duck down and they were being shot at by snipers. If anybody in the Secret Service, as soon as they saw that, they knew it was untrue. Um, just by the way, and then, of course, as soon as they find out that it's untrue, then it's somebody else's fault, a mistake was made. When FBI Director Comey read, this, read uh, his statement the other day and decided not to charge her, but he did say that at least five times she lied about the server, about the email. If you pay attention, if your viewers had the chance to watch um, you know, the first thing she said when the server story broke was uh, that, um, that that it didn't happen. There was no private server. And then there was a private server. And um, she only had one device. Then there was multiple devices. And then e- each time she got caught in the lie, they just blame it on somebody else. And um, they never, ever come forward and tell the truth. And here's the funny thing. You know, if... if one of her reasonings is that she wanted to use a private server was for because the, the State Department server was so slow. You, you know, she's one of these people who wants these huge government programs. Fix the problem. Fix the problem with the State Department server and then use it like you're supposed to. Nobody in the federal government is allowed to go outside their, their government servers. And, she, and, again, that was another example of her line. And, yes, it's exactly what I expect to happen. Uh, our guest is uh, Gary Byrne, who's got a book called Crisis of Character. You know, timing is everything. And the very thing that I have brought home about this current um, uh, crisis with Hillary Clinton over the email situation is that her her untrustworthy numbers are off the charts. And there's a reason for that. And it addresses exactly the title of your book. Repeatedly yeah. through her career, there have been questions about issues she's been involved with and they all come back to the question of character and and whether or not you can look somebody in the eye and tell them the truth um, what was your experience in the in the white house that drove you to write this book well the reason i wrote this book is because i wanted the american people to know the truth and and the truth is that mrs clinton is more of a dictator than anything else she's driven by political polls and she says whatever she has to 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 fulfill those, whatever the political polls, you know, whichever way they swear, she'll she'll come down on, on the side of anything. And, and if you look at her record over the years, the things she flip flopped on, um, those are good examples. 
But if, if your guests are kind enough to read my book, First of the Character, they'll see it as I chronicle many instances of her bad behavior where she acts like a dictator. Again, she wants these big government programs, but she doesn't want to follow the rules. She wanted her husband to become president. She was the first lady, but they didn't want to follow the guidelines and the rules of the Secret Service or the way the White House functions. And I, think, and I have many stories in my book, First of the Character, detailing these, these type of things. And um, it's just bizarre. Uh, anybody, that, that, anybody that thinks that she's on it, they're just not dealing in reality. I, I think that probably the truest test of that is what you related about her interactions <laughs> with, with you and other members of the military who were, who were around the family behind closed doors. Can I get you to elaborate on that? Sure. Um, when, I worked, when I worked at the White House for the closing, as a Secret Service Uniform Division officer, uh, I had many instances where, um, one in particular where Mrs. Clinton berated me personally because um, I wouldn't let one of her staff members do something with a group of tourists in the hall. And I tried to explain to them that these are rules based on congressional law. This just wasn't made up the day before. And they just can't tolerate being told they can't have it their way. And Mrs. Clinton was the worst. She reacted very poorly. She referred to, she referred to um, my group, uh, the Uniform Division, as a bunch of a-holes. And that's just one example. I have many more if you, if you had the time to listen to them where she berated people. And, and she had her staff, some of her staff that were friends from Arkansas, were so afraid of her. They were terrified to tell her that a mistake had been made ordering some stationery. And um, for the social office, they were so terrified of her that they were debating. I, I, I found them in the hallway one day arguing over who was going to tell her because they didn't want to get fired and sent back to Arkansas. It's just, it's just in, her, her behavior is, is unbelievable. Yeah. And, and I detail this very honestly and truthfully in my book, Chris. And, and you can see the pattern now with people who were afraid to tell her, no, you can't have a private server. You need to right. run this through the State Department. Exactly. And, and if, you know, one, another thing the FBI director made very clear yesterday, that her staff, if they're not going to hold her responsible, they need to hold somebody responsible in her staff because they were doing the same thing. And you cannot have those positions and not have signed the same paperwork I signed for your top secret clearance where you understand how that system works. You can never, ever send classified information over the Internet, and they did it all the time. Just, just recently, when I was still a couple of years ago, and I was still a federal air marshal, we had an air marshal who, out of the Washington, D.C. area who made a mistake. He took his, his schedule, as an, as an air marshal schedule, and he put it on the side of his refrigerator so his family knew where he was and knew how to get a hold of him when he was traveling around the, the world uh, protecting aviation. And he made a mistake one day, and he told his supervisor about it. The supervisor wrote him up, and they fired him for one infraction. But Mrs. Clinton gets away with this time after time again. And the latest example with the server is just incredible. Nobody else could get away with that. Well, it's reminiscent of what Bill Clinton got away with for many years. You also have several stories about him in the book. Um, I, I know the one about Eleanor Mondale uh, comes to mind. Uh, yeah. These were, these were always rumors, but uh, nobody ever had any real evidence of it, I guess. So one of the things I'd like to touch on before I, I, I highlight that is um, – you know, a lot of the, my critics are coming out and, and, and calling, saying that, you know, I made this up and it's not true. A lot of these stories came out before, you know, from other, uh, and other people wrote about them. But the way they got out is because Secret Service agents went and told these stories to these book writers and reporters over free steak dinners and martinis and didn't put their name on it. I'm telling you what I experienced firsthand, and, um, and I'm putting my face and name on it. And, and in that light of you know, what happened in front of me is this Eleanor Mondale story, which is I was walking from the east side of the White House to the west side of the, of the White House complex on the ground floor inside the mansion one day, and I stopped by a, um, one of the posts there to talk to one of my co-workers. It was around Christmas time, and so as we're standing there talking, one of the Navy stewards who had a clean shirt for the president went to go into the map room to give it to him. When he opened the map room door, he was looking back at us. We were standing in the hallway on the ground floor, and he couldn't see what we saw. And what we saw when he opened the door was the President Clinton and Eleanor Mondale standing up in front of the table there, uh, making out like high school seniors. And um, they never looked up. And, you know, the steward, when he saw the look on our face, he looked 
Then he looked in the room, and then he, you know, he got all embarrassed. He closed the door and then took off down the hallway. And we just stood there and looked at each other and, you know, made the comment, like, you know, here we go again, or, you know, par for the course. So, and that's something I witnessed personally. And, uh, like, many of the things that are in my book, Crisis of Character, um, I actually had to testify to because I was the first Secret Service employee to be compelled to testify against the president in a criminal case. And that was during the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Wow. Well, there, there's a lot of eye-opening material in there, and I know that uh, the book is doing very well in sales, and I'm glad to hear that because more and more of these stories need to get out. Uh, Thank you so much. G- Gary Byrne, the book is called The Crisis of Character. I encourage everybody to read it. So at least if you're going to vote for Hillary Clinton, you understand what you're getting into. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Gary, have a, great, have a great day. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you.